Barry. Smithland, where is Smithland? Do a food web in a nano tank. Absolutely. Absolutely. Smithland. Do a food web in a nano tank. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh-oh. You already typed up. Got this open. That'll do it. All right. Silver platy button. Silver play button. Ah. Huh. Yeah, I'm talking to myself, right? I got it. I got it. Silver play button. Yeah, that'll be fun. This week? This week? Um, I was going to do my ridicule. I was, uh, uh, that's Cornwall, straight out of Cornwall. Nice to see you, Cornwall. I was going to do a benefit um, or a, a series of prizes and a, and a chance to welcome people up this coming Sunday. But it turns out I'm going, I've been invited to be the first speaker at the Bel Air, Maryland Fish Club at their very first meeting. That'll be next Sunday at noon. So there's a good chance, it's about a three hour drive, a good chance I will not get back in time to, uh, to do the Sunday evening stream next week. So I'm going to probably do the program as a live stream, but that'll be on much earlier in the day, like around noon my time. So we'll see how it all works out. But what we will do the following week, that'll be the 19th. We'll have a celebration on the 19th. Me all fashion boho dresses in Turkey. Oh, how wonderful. And we'll get you a wrench, me, me all. Me all fashion boho dresses. You'll have to give us a link, me all. Be real interested in uh, what you're doing. Rasa Bernardo, Bernarda from New Mexico. Nice to have you with us. Let's give you give you a wrench. Demo Darb, hello, hello. In Herefordshire. Herefordshire, England. Justin Herbert in Australia. Hello, hello. Riddicky is here. Hello, Riddicky. Barry Cherry from Smithland, Kentucky. Very happy to have you here. I don't know where Smithland is. I went to college in Barberdale, which is uh, Knox County. That is just below Corbin, Kentucky. Not far from Harlan County, Kentucky. Um, southeast. Way deep southeast. But I don't know where Smithland is. It's a big state. So let's see. Ledford Landon. Second dirty tank is a 55. Working at Plants End. Nice. Get you a wrench, Midland. Do you hear the canaries? Genso in Norway. Hello, Genso. Happy to have you. Happy to have you here. Eric Kahn is here. Hello, Eric from New York State. 
Bloomington, Indiana, Kent Anderson. Hello, Kent. Happy to have you here. I'm taking the time to get everybody on board here. Beth Millard. Hello, Beth. In Austin, Texas. Say we can get you a wrench. Turn everybody blue here. What does the title of the video mean? A dirt it is not dirty. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. One of the criticisms that we get with dirted tanks is that it's dirty and smelly. Uh, and the, the uh, the cantankerous among us claim they don't want a dirty, smelly tank, so they don't want dirt in their tank. So it's a, it's it's um, it's a misunderstanding, of course, of what a dirted tank really is. Sexy guy from Paducah, near Paducah, Kentucky. I know where that is. What's this? Uh, we have Hughes and uh, Quebec. Goodness, all the new people. And somebody, where was it? In Serbia. There it is. Goran Jovanovic. In Serbia. Ad moderator. How delightful to have people from all over the world here. Just really amazing. Silver Creek is here. Delighted to see you. Holla Girl is here. Love you too, Holla Girl. West Virginia Holla Girl. And the hoots and hollers. Yeah, I was when I was in Kentucky, we were we were down down in the hollers, down in Appalachia. Southeast Appalachia, Appalachia, Oscar Miranda. Thank you, Oscar. Do appreciate it. Ken won. Hey, Ken. Need to get in New Jersey. New Jersey, you're close to me, Ken. I'm in uh, on the eastern shore. Maryland and Salisbury, just over the Delaware line. Quebec, Hughes, Bujold in Quebec. Happy to have you here, Hughes. Let's see, we got a little caught up here. Zombie unicorn. Hello, zombie. Preston Strobel. I moved out of Florida a year ago. A uh, June a year ago, actually. A uh, Mangian is a Filipino. Happy to have the Filipino contention among us. Mom lives just outside of London, says uh, YFI. London, Kentucky. That's London, Kentucky, not London, England. Mike Gamer from Chicago. We are all over the world here, aren't we? Andy Merkap, viewer from Europe, Croatia, had a dirty tank 15 years ago, functioning without any problems for over 10 years. Yeah, I know exactly about that. This tank is, as for those of you who, who don't know, this is a dirted tank. It's a 33-gallon, four-foot tank that's been set up for 22 years and doing pretty well. King Fats from Windsor, England. Hello, King Fats. Darren Niles. Hello, Darren. From Maine. Nice to have you here. Auntie, did I get you a wrench? I did. 
Abadu is here. Hello, Abadu. How are you? Nice to have you here. Hollers and Creeks. So we're, so we're Creek finds as people. Yeah, I know all about it. Now, I grew up in southern Maryland, which is not mountainous at all. It's a, it's a plain area. Um, but the culture was very similar. Got an old English culture. Um, and most of my family, except for the German side, which are the grandmothers, but all of the grandfathers all the way back are old English, settled on the eastern shore of Maryland, all the way back to the 1600s. So I've got pretty deep roots here on the shore and deep roots in uh, merry old England. I, I've always... I've always uh, assumed that one day I would return to my homeland to claim my ancestral manse, but I have never done that. So I suppose it's in good hands. <laughs> Victor from the Czech Republic. Hello, Victor. Martin Linder from Wisconsin. Hello, Martin. Nice to have you with us. Billy Bob. Hello, Billy Bob. Wallstead works well. Data does. Happy Fun Day Sunday, says Scott Stankovich. Hello, Scott. Scott. Hello, Scott. Scott Stankovich. And who is this? Sherry Zebra is here. Hello, Sherry. Where are you from, my dear? Nice to have you with us. David Newsom from Indiana. Hello, David. I'm trying to trying to keep caught up here on wrenches. I don't know why I do this, but uh, hello from Utah. This is SSAD. D man, sad man. Nice to have you here. Sad man. Can, can who's that car? Cams. Cams Aquatics from Toronto. Hello, Cams Aquatics. Andy Anderson from Australia. Hello, Andy. Happy to have you here. Another continent. Preston Strobel, best memory you've experienced. Oh, my word. Goodness sake, what a question. <laughs> oh, I don't even know. There have been so many. Golly. Probably the one that stands out to me. As, as the most emotional. Who says, why if I gifted five Fatherfish memberships? Thank you so much, why if I. That's very generous and very kind. The Planted Aquarium God says, TTM, we need to give you a wrench. TTM. Let's see, can I... We can do this. There it is. Right. Thank you, YFI. Shifty Mac. Am I familiar with Johnson SU Bioreactor? No, I am not, Shifty Mac. Marky Mark's Musical Journey. Father Fish, hello. I'd like to ask you a question, please. Do you do saltwater setups in a healthy, natural way, as well as freshwater tanks? Setting up a reefer with an octopus, any advice, please? Absolutely. In point of fact, I began doing 
natural salt water long before I did natural fresh water. The, the origins of natural salt water go back to the early 60s. There, 60 years ago, there were natural salt water tanks, uh, reef tanks being developed. It came out of, and I've lost the reference, I need to find it, uh, came out of I don't remember the country, um, a, 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 a country on the, on, on the, what's it called, the Golden Coast. It was brought into the state by Merle Cohen, who did a presentation of a natural saltwater system in 1963 at a meeting of it was one of the first meetings of the, golly, uh, com was the Commercial Wholesaler Association, Commercial Pet Wholesaler Association. Don't I think it was in Chicago. Uh, it was adopted. Um, by in the in the late eighties, twenty years later, almost twenty five years later, by GARP, Geothermal Aquatic Research Foundation, and they really promoted it heavily among saltwater enthusiasts, particularly in early coral reef systems. So. It really became the foundation of the coral reef system because it provided a food web and a natural balanced environment for corals, which is absolutely critical in those early years to being able to keep coral. It wasn't until Walstead in the late 90s that there was any attempt to do a dirt in freshwater or any acknowledgement of a dirted fresh water. Now, I remember trying one from Merle Cohen back in the 60s in fresh water. Failed utterly because I did it essentially as a wall stent without capping the dirt um, and, and could not keep the nutrients out of the water column. Did not have adequate plants at the time to be able to maintain it. So that didn't work. However, by by 2000, I was doing it with a, with a sand cap, which I adopted from a mono, a mono, a mono and, um, what's it called, green, green, in England, oh, I can't remember the name. Green something, green thumb, not green thumb. I don't remember. It'll come to me. Um, anyway, they began doing sand, and Amano was was sprinkling nutrients, um, minerals on the glass, and then capping it with sand. He was actually selling little capsules of minerals. So I adopted that, tied that to the dirt, added the minerals to the dirt. That became the foundation for the, the supplement package, which has been augmented substantially since then, added to the soil, developed the formula for the soil based on a substantial amount of humus. Uh, there have been complaints about using uh, um, peat moss because it's banned in certain countries. But any kind of humus will do. Even leaf culture doesn't really matter. Uh, coconut, um, with the char will work. Almost anything will work. Um, I, I also use worm casings in my supplement. So 
it's a significant part of the supplement, but that's really a small part of the total uh, soil package. And then cap the whole thing with two inches of sand. The critical thing is to, in a tank under 55 gallons, to not do more than one inch of soil. That prevents the possibility of, of soil leakage into the water column. And that's a critical issue. That's really one of the main purposes of the sand, but certainly not the only one. There are a number of other uh, important benefits that that sand provides. Shervin and Marani, how to fix water hardness being high. You don't need to fix it. Uh, hard water is never a problem. Add plants, lots of plants. The plants will do well in it, and they will help to, uh, to reduce the hardness to get that GH down. Any carbonates that are in there are going to maintain the stability of the pH. So it really is not an issue. You can buy humic granules in a bag on Amazon named humic, but remember, little goes a long way. Humic, humic. Oh, that's interesting. Humic granules. Ah. Heaters. Jay Kerner, looking for a natural way to balance it out besides goalie because it's only a 20 gallon. That's why the duckweed. I'm adding a wrench here. Duckweed is okay. And the new fish is automatically fed. It's not following what that's all about. Uh, Russell Jones. Hello, Russell Jones. 101. I don't think so. Where am I? Let me, let me take a look. I was not at 99 earlier, and I don't think I am yet. Let's see. Uh, 98.3. It'll be another two days before I hit 100. I, I may do something that day if I can. What's my oldest fit? Inherited a 78-year-old koi, my word, and a 24-year-old Paco. Wow, that's amazing. That's impressive, Peter. I don't think I've ever had a fish that old. Koi will live well over 100 years, and they get really quite large. Purple Reef Floaters, Jay, is talking about and yeah we'll be at a hundred by Tuesday or Wednesday I would guess it's getting close oh uh, Darren I'm 83 turned 83 in September thank you so much Preston a ah, hundred I don't even feel like a hundred. I feel like, how old do I feel? I don't know. I'm getting some strength back in my legs. That's been biggest problem. I, I, I recently had an episode. I went on a, uh, an all meat diet about four months ago. Lost twenty five pounds for right away, and then stalled. And didn't know why. Stalled for like three months. And in that time, it started getting swelling in my legs. And my blood pressure began going up. And my weight, did, my weight began to go up. Finally, talked to uh, uh, a, cardio, a cardiology nurse for about half an hour. And we we figured it all out. Turns out, I was so excited about the new diet 
because I had been off salt for years. No salt added to anything ever. And I just went crazy with salt because I was told I need to salt my steak. So I was putting a coat, a coat of salt on my steak and just eat, loving eating all the salt. But my body wasn't loving all the salt. I started storing fluids, building up fluid in my legs, weight stalled, and then eventually started adding weight, and my blood pressure skyrocketed. Didn't happen quickly. It happened slowly. So it didn't happen right away, and I didn't really understand until I had that conversation and then realized that was the, the variable. So that was like three weeks ago. I've been all salt for three weeks. I'm back down, losing weight again. The swelling has gone down. Blood pressure has gone down. I'm down seven pounds from where I was. And uh, feel like I'm back on track. So that's exciting. Uh, 83. 83 in September. 101 now. Right. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm scrolling through here. Oh, the stickers on my shirt. Um, you know what? I've got these were made by Susie Q. That's sweet. I love it. Um, I've got some bigger ones coming. They're three inches. I will probably add a sticker because I've got two or three different ones. I'm probably going to add a sticker to um to my shop and it'll be a group of stickers it'll be two or three i also have a few bumper stickers left i i need to print some more they're they're kind of pricey but they're so neat an old time pet shop that was from venice i have a newer one i had made i'm gonna order some uh it's Father Fish Aquarium, and it's an old-time fish caper with, I think, a phone number, or I'll probably do the website. We have a new website that's gradually getting itself together. It's fatherfish.fish, fatherfish.fish. It is up and operational. You can, you can go there. There's not a whole lot on it yet, but it's... Uh, it's getting better by the day. Let's see. Francisco Ferrero. Fer, Ferriera. Ferriera. Uh, running on Vermicompo for 15 days. A little algae. Yeah, generally speaking, if you got algae, it just, it's because, uh, the plants are not providing adequate uh, competition. DB, hello DB. Fish lip. A low fish lip. Nice to have you here. Let's see. Casanova. From Kent, UK. Nice to have you here, Casanova. Outside in aquatics. I ran into you recently. Right. I subscribed to your channel. Oh, delighted. That's so nice. Nice to have you here. Yeah, I was just really impressed with what you're doing of your channel. It, it uh, Post your link, please. Let's get a bunch of people checking you out. It's a brand new channel, Outside in Aquatics. Um. He's got some really exciting concepts that, that I was very impressed with. Mentioned uh, that doing a dirted tank, 
uh, I do hope you'll try it. I think you'll appreciate it. And I think it'll work extremely well for what you're trying to do. But please, folks, uh, post your link outside Aquatics so that we can uh, get over and visit you and and uh, subscribe to your channel. Try to get you get you uh, a, get you at least a hundred subscribers. Let's see if we can do that. That would be wonderful. Rosa Bernato. Let's see. My goodness, look at all the new people. What is this? Scott's think of it. What happened here? I need to get back over. Scott has just given us $10. Question of the evening. Have you had any success breeding egg scattering fish, Danny O's Red Forest, without removing plants? Yet I've been waiting for that to happen in this tank, and I've yet to see babies. Uh, I have done so with pupfish um, at, the, at the old shop. I've also done it with rainbows. Uh, that's worked out pretty well. Not egg scatterers with non-adhesive eggs. Now, I think the pupfish are adhesive eggs. I'm not certain about that, but I believe they are. And Furrer, Fire Gamer says, your deep soil method works. Yes, indeed, it does. Delighted to have you here, Fire. Fire Gamer. Manu Bustero Iglesiasis. It's true plants grow, won't grow with high sulfate phosphates. No, it is not true. What is true is they will control the phosphates. Um, it could be it could be high enough initially to stunt them, but but if you'll keep trying various types, you will find there will be some that will begin to absorb those phosphates and reduce the uh, sulfates and, and get control of it. Rodney McVeigh. Hello, Rodney. Nice to have you with us. And Rodney is saying, three months later, my 20-gallon looks like an underwater jungle. Had to cut back some greenery to allow more light to the fish. Oh, they'll find the fish. Ah. Mud says you're the Mick Jagger of the Deep South. Funny, funny stuff, funny stuff. David Jenner can do with some help. I have a tank of box and a filter box attached to the glass. Had to remove it but clean, but now the plastic box floats. Advice on how to reattach. Silicone. Just use silicone. It's inert in water. It'll work fine. You could use uh, super glue, but it probably won't work. Uh, but silicone certainly will. You might need to lower the water level long enough for the silicone to set up. It'll take about a day for it to set up. Casanova 401. Let's see, do uh, outside in aquatics, make, make sure you post your link, please. I want to give folks a chance to, uh, to, to see what you're doing. And thank you, Scott. Preston's Rubble says it's not true. That's correct. It's not true. Billy's great. BLB here. Thank is thank is thriving. Thanks for everything. You're very welcome. We, we need to move down here a little bit. And get you get you a wrench. 
Kyle Lessard driving home from the lake for some material for my resurrection tank. Bravo, good for you. Called it a recovery tank. Well, that too. That too. Free Gamer, you're very welcome. Thank you, Free Gamer. Recreate a pond. That's basically right. Ken, basically right. Tim New from Swindon, UK. I don't know where Swindon is. That's a new one on me. Let's see. DB joined Outside the Aquatics. Bravo. Bravo. Oh, yeah, that's right. If you, I think, is it there? It should be. Yes, if you'll click on the three dots opposite Outside and Aquatics post, the first, the first thing you come to is go to channel. Click on that and you'll be able to... Uh, to subscribe and then come on right back post it i hope you can see it it is there outside bravo it's there automatically business christian can you tell me how much time to keep aquarium lights on having hair algae on driftwood well, i'll just cut it back then add more plants and cut it back. Uh, you can start cutting back an hour or two at a time until you feel like you're getting control. The other thing about hair algae is you need to physically remove it. It's pretty easy to get out if because it, it grows in long strands. If you just pull it out, you can get nearly all of it. And if you keep up with that, in a week or two, it'll be gone. Might take a little longer, but if you keep up with it daily or every couple of days, it won't take long to get rid of it. Marky Mark's musical journey. Let's see, what is this? W Bass, $5 donation, looking... For advice, I have a neon blue dwarf, blue dwarf ceramic that just sits at the bottom of the tank the past week and won't eat. I'm, a, I'm afraid he's dying. Well, there's a better than even chance you're right. There's a serious problem with the dwarf ceramics. They do not come in healthy. They come in diseased universally. Uh, there are one or two farmers that have been able to defeat that, but the big wholesalers are not interested in paying the extra money to get healthy ones. They keep buying them from the Far East because they're dirt cheap, even though they die in a matter of weeks. They're diseased. It's a virus. There's nothing you can do about it. My recommendation is you don't buy them from any kind of pet shop. If you go on Get Gills, you can find them. Uh, they're available from local uh, U.S.-based farmers when they're available, which is not always. Uh, but that's really the only way to be able to get them. It's also the only way to get females. You'll never get a female from uh, an import. Tara, 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 Tara Watara, a $2 donation. Thank you, Tara. And I need to find you. Marky Mark. I'm lost here. I'm totally lost. I get found here. Tara. There's Tony Mama. David Danner. 
uh, Corey are pulling out plants. Um, try uh, frog spit or um, uh, can't think of what it's called. It's a floating plant. Try some floating plants. Uh, that, that'll shift their interest. Tara Watara. N4279. Can you keep Amazon Puffer in a 10 gallon cube? Uh, they get a little big. You can certainly start them out in that. Charger R350. What's up, Pat Fish? Nice to have you here. Let's see. W Bass. You did Terra. There's W Bass. Uh, that's the Garami. And then we did Terra. And then Marky Mark's Musical Journey. There, now we've caught up, I think. First Super on live stream. Celebrate the first Super on live stream. Gonna celebrate by giving you a wrench. Charge your R350. We already did your wrench. Is it better for plants that have still water or surface agitation? Uh, I don't think it matters. They don't like fast moving water. Uh, but surface agitation probably on balance helps. It's probably on balance a good thing. Um, it, it, they certainly don't mind. It doesn't hurt them. Uh, Slawimer Wolf. And I'm going to have to do a translation here. See if I can do that. Tech language. I'm from Poland. Been watching your channel for a long time. Your advice has already helped me a lot in keeping my aquarium in a stable condition. Thank you. Well, you're very, very welcome. Let me see. If I can respond now in Polish, English, Witten, you are very welcome. Right. Snow Slowmer. Need to get you a wrench. Molson twenty eight eighty nine. The Tara Watara. Need to get over to Tara. There's Ralph. Thank you, Ralph. My fiddler crab is carrying eggs. Huh. Well, that's exciting. They're um they're gonna be fertile. The babies are going to get eaten. What you probably, if you want to keep them, you're going to have to put him in in a separate tank by himself or herself so that the babies don't get eaten because everybody will eat them. 
you you will wind up with none very quickly. So that's what I would do. I would set up a a, a little uh, not a hospital tank. You want you want a, a a tank with a lot of plants in it and a good uh, a good food web so that when their babies are born they're going to be able to eat right away and good luck with that that'll be fun that's exciting you'll see you'll begin to see babies in about a month maybe two weeks that they're reading well they have to go through two or three sheds before they'll be big enough to really be able to see them Let's see. Uh, Parasimus Knox says, make sure you have plenty of fine leaf plants and moss. And if you provide an adequate thicker, chances are higher the parents won't find the eggs. Also, surface to grade on, to graze on. That certainly works. Marky Mark has a cheeky plug. David Danner, who did your, let's see, I'm, I'm, I'm a little behind here. How many plants do you get for your stem plant package? Enough for a 55? No, it's not. For a 55, you need the package, and then you need some sword plants or valid scenario. Or both, uh, two or three swords, some valisneria, and um, or sad. I do have a nice sad, and the stem plants. That'll be a good start. Outside the aquatics. It's, how are you doing? I need to check out. Hi, you, sir. See how you're doing here. Go to the channel. We're up to 440. Well, that's pretty good. Where were you? Nice. Nice. How can I call it your red blood worm? Uh, if you do a food web and do it without predators you know, do it without fish do it in essentially a uh, a resurrection not a jar but a tray like a, a shoe box a plastic shoe box if you'll do it in that and just put a few in there they'll culture out pretty quickly and you'll you'll be able to get enough to be able to begin feeding them inner city pigeon Need to get you a wrench. Yeah, Deb's saying removing bits of hair algae. It's a quick job. It really is. It's not hard to do. You just need to stay with it. And you'll get control of it. Andrew Foley. Hello, hello. Araka, 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 69, makes seem incredible, makes Chris, crystal java female is pregnant. Don't know what to do. Crystal java female. Let's get you a wrench and then figure out what a crystal java female is. Well, come on. This is funny. All right. Jawa. Hmm. 
We don't know what that is. Mercy, W. Bass just donated 20 bucks. Let's see. i got to keep up here. This is Chris, Australia, $2 from Hobart, Tasmania. Thank you so much, Chris. And Kalo Barancas, uh, R1090. Did my first tank by Brazil. Or what is R? What is that? I don't know. Uh, 1090. Thank you. Kalo. Kayo. Cal. Cal. Kayo. Cal. Chow. Chow Barancas. I'm terrible with these names. W of S. Here we go. WS Super Sticker, $20. Thank you, WS. Very kind. Very generous. Thank you so much. Let's see. Are we, are we keeping up? AKA Fungi Eater making a spawning map from cotton. Dyed red. Will that dye harm the fish? You, just no way to know. I would put it in a separate container in water first to find out whether it's color fast. It may well be, probably is, but you want to check it first. Although dyes tend not to be toxic, it's not worth a risk. You never really know. Uh, generally speaking, uh, most people who do, who do mops use uh, raw cotton, undyed raw cotton. Um, to prevent that very issue. Uh, it's a good starter fish for a new dirted tank. Can one. Any kind of live bearer, any kind of tetra, uh, just fish that you, that you will find in a big box store. Make sure they look as healthy as possible and be sure to set up a uh, quarantine tank. Put them in your quarantine tank first. And then after they're okay for a week, move them into your tank. Unless you trust the source. Uh, if it's a, a good quality pet shop or you can really trust the source, then you can get them in your tank right away. But the, the, the easiest ones are the live bears, guppies, mollies, platies. Uh, things like zebra, danios, danios are always good, tetras, there are so many pretty tetras, and they're, they're generally pretty easy as well. Ryan Oaks, poor dirty tanks going strong. Still not one water change. Good job. TTM Awawa, do you know if scuds are good for an aquarium? They absolutely are. They're a good chewer. They break down plant material. Uh, they're, uh, what's the word? It's not chewer, but a, a word like that. Chewer. I keep thinking chewer. Scruncher, cruncher, chopper. They break down plant material for microscopic fauna to be able to handle it. And they're also a wonderful food supply for small fish. They're a macro fauna and a very, very good one. They are a detrit detritus eater. They will not harm anything. And they'll also... They tend to hide underneath things. So you may have them and not know you do. If you have flat rocks, wood, anything like that, they'll burrow under it because that's how they protect themselves. Uh, DB says the package was beautiful and just perfect. I didn't answer the question, how many. There are 
15 bunches of 15 different kinds of stem plant. Now we try to put an extra bunch in. So you actually get could get 16. But these are all hand counted. Somebody recently told me they only got 14. So I made up the difference for them. But you should get 16. You're, you're buying 15. Silver Creek. Depths unknown. There you go. David Anotti says Thrifters Workshop. Let me get over back over here. The only way I can post these is uh, on there. Is that it? There's Reverend John, a nine ninety nine super sticker. Thank you, Reverend John. Delighted to have you here. Bless you. And there's T. A Tylotl, a nine ninety nine. I got five of the stickers you were wearing with my orders last week. Goodness sakes, you made out like a man that didn't. Bravo. <laughs> and here's Chris, two dollars super sticker from Australia. Is pool filter sand safe for aquariums? It is absolutely perfect. Probably the best sand you can use. Not a problem at all. Barrel constantly filling autumn foliage. I stored them, transferring the leaves to my tanks when the old ones are gone. Some water movement, flooding plants, critters galore. That's for awesome as Knox. David and Naughty. Best way to propagate stem plant. And how do you know when to take cuttings? Well, you do it at will. I don't do it. I never, I never trim. Uh, but they get long. They they just grow long. It's obvious when when they're long enough to trim, and then they'll branch out. So you'll wind up uh, getting a, a a bushy kind of effect. Losing control here. Marky Mark's musical journey. Wild Bill. Hello, Wild Bill. Facundo, Facundo Maza recently started a father fish with true astro, two astronautists. McColgy, thank you, Father Fish, for all your information. You're very very welcome. We're going to get you a wrench right now. What do we got here? 150 people. We're doing pretty well. Show your appreciation and give Father Fish a thumbs up. Boss you nothing helps Father Fish to reach a wider audience. It certainly does. Do appreciate it. Let's see where the thumbs up are. 118. We got 159, 155 people here. Uh, we need 40 of you guys to uh, to hit it, hit that thumbs up. 121. You know what? I didn't post that, did I? That was the response to the. To the post, the Polish post. Thank you, Patty. Chris. Get you a wrench. What is your question here? Rinse the sand well before adding to the tank. So uh, I have had people tell me that they bought full filter sand that was dirty. I can't even imagine why anyone would sell dirty pool filter sand. It just sounds stupid to me. I bought it for years in Florida, and it was very well washed sand. But apparently that's not a universal, so you just need to check. Thomas Simek, gone to sleep and saw you live. Really appreciate and respect you and your content. Thank you, Tomas. Appreciate you very much. 
Cryptic Viper. Explain the full purpose of taking mud from the local pond. No, it feeds small fish. Do I need to know? I'm making the tank in winter. So I won't have mud. You really don't want to do muck. You want to do leaves. You, you don't want muck, muck. You don't want mud so much as you want rotting leaves. That contains all of the live fauna. It helps to break down waste. And it also provides nutrients for really all of the fish, even bigger fish. I mean, two, three-inch fish will eat macrofauna. Uh, it's, they're, they're not that tiny to them. Scared pine cone. Thank you so much for getting me back into the fish hobby after many failed attempts. Well, you're very welcome. Happy to help. That's what it's all about. Dune sand is best. You betcha. Dune sand is the best. It's rain washed. It's absolutely perfect. But the very best is sand, live sand from a creek or saltwater live sand from, uh, uh, from a bay. That's the absolute best. But the best dry sand is certainly dune sand. Absolutely. Der Stifle. Give you a wrench. Animal videos. What temperature should, should a better tank be? I get in trouble every time I say this. I keep my tanks at 82. There are those that keep them at 75. I think it risks a danger of, of, uh, of disease, particularly ick. 82 will pretty well control ick. Um, and it also, I think, is healthier for the fish. It promotes more um, uh, uh, microfauna as well. Uh, my tank does have sponge filters, so I do use sponge filters. Don't use them universally, but almost all of my tanks have a sponge filter. <clears throat> Dragonfish, set up first, start a jar. Thank you so much. Delighted to have you here. Gonna get you wrenched up, Dragonfish. Brandon Chanel. I'm going to get over here so I can post it. Who says this dirted a uh, drifter's workshop? Thank you, Canadian two dollars. What size is that tank and what light? It has, uh, I think they're 100 watt LED floodlights. I've got four of them. And it's a 30, about a 33 gallon. It's a 4 foot by 12 by 12. Let me see if I can find this other. There it is. Brandon Chenault. Planning on starting a 20 tank soon. Does ashes from a fireplace provide benefit? Absolutely does. Absolutely. Mix it in with the soil. Excellent. Excellent. There's Stifle. Thank you. And Brandon. And let's get down to. There's Stifle. Thank you. There's Stifle. Delighted to have you here. Appropriate size tank for a better. You're trying to get me in trouble, aren't you, Preston? I know you. I know what you're talking about. You can keep a betta in whatever size container you want to keep a betta in, so long as it's a healthy environment. You need plants. You need a deep substrate. You need, uh, you need live culture. 
uh, and it'll do fine. You can do it in a bowl. You can do it in a 20-gallon tank. Some bettas cannot swim very well and so require a smaller container. There are other bettas that do just fine in large containers. But don't give me this stuff about you have to have a betta in a 20-gallon tank. No such thing. Bettas do absolutely fine in small containers so long as they are kept healthy. And that's the key. It must be healthy. I never, never, never feed any kind of prepared food in a small container with a betta. I always feed live food because it maintains the health of the aquarium. I also always have a, a substrate at least an inch and a half to two inches deep. Always. 100% of the time. I always have one or more plants growing in there to absorb ammonia and nitrate to help control the health of the tank. If it's a healthy tank, it doesn't really matter. These fish, betta fish, are born and raised in soda bottles in the Far East. Thousands of soda bottles are used as the first home for baby bettas, and they grow up to full size in those soda bottles. Now, there is a process that is used to keep them clean and healthy and to feed them live food only. But that's how they're kept initially. And until they are full grown or, or fully mature, they don't know anything other than a soda bottle. Now, when you see a better in a little bowl in a big box store and it is rank and rancid and dying, that is not an appropriate way to keep a better. It is disgusting. And anybody doing it, any shop doing it, should be screamed at for daring to deliberately kill their fish in order to try to generate sales. It is that's what's unethical. That is unethical. You can keep them in a little jar and they will be totally healthy if you treat it right. But they never do. So I'm cer certainly supportive of those who are complaining about, about bettas in little jars in big box stores that are dying. I am also complaining about people who insist upon rescuing them because all that's doing is promoting the sale of fish that are being kept sick. If nobody bought them, they'd stop doing it. Don't buy sick fish. Not even to try to rescue them. Don't do it because you're promoting sick fish by doing it. You're not doing the fish any favor. You're certainly not doing the hobby any favor. Don't do it. Very stifle. Let's see what else we got cooking here. I'll tell you what. There ain't no way to keep up with all this. Victor Coco, thank you for this. Uh, Coco, thank you for the super sticker. Very kind of you. All right, we got down down to the scared pine cone. Guppy Scott, Hank, you use your advice, 84 for three days and gone. You were fortunate. You were fortunate. My advice is 86 to 87. You were fortunate that 84 worked. It doesn't always. 86 to 87 is the appropriate temperature. But it does demonstrate that the parasite is a cold water parasite. Thoughts on scuds. Love scud. Uh, 
you got to keep them by themselves, and they need adequate food. Uh, uh, decaying plants, decaying leaves are good. You got to get a couple of them going. You need you need a small group to get them going, and then you'll be able to do it. Provide adequate food. Do it in a shoebox. Do it in a little plastic shoebox. That's the very best way. Get about an inch of sand. Uh, heavy, uh, heavy uh, leaf culture. Do some uh, some culture in it. They don't eat other fauna. They only eat decaying matter. So you they you may you may have something in there that's eating the scuds. Keep an eye out for that. Crypt viper, cryptic viper, hard to avoid rampant ignorance. You walk into those stores, it's like three gallons separated into one gallon, meant for three vetas or bowls. I know, I know. Mind the ticker, perhaps. I'm doing fine, Yuri. I'm okay, thank you. I appreciate it. It, it energizes me. Mike Cross just got my 150 bedroom thing set back up. Ended up with five inches of sand. I love it. Bravo, Mike. That's wonderful. How long do bedders live in those little cups? Uh, a couple of weeks, about two weeks, and they die. That's because they threw, they flew, they threw flake food in there, and it fouls, and then they get disease. They get bacteria. They get diseased. They sit there wasting away and they die. Happens over and over again. But they do it deliberately. They do it in order to generate sales from little girls who feel sorry for the poor sick fish. Little girls need to learn they're not helping anything by buying sick fish. Demand they have healthy fish. Don't buy sick fish. Get chew their butts about sick fish. Don't buy them to rescue them. Don't do it. All you're doing is promoting it. What's I think for sheep's head? No, no. I don't keep many tank mates with them. They're pretty, um, they're not aggressive so much. As they are insane. They chase everything to death. So it's really hard to keep anything with sheep's head. If you keep them like two males, four females in, in a tank by themselves with a good substrate, in the spring to summer they will spawn. It'll be full of babies. And they don't predate on their babies. So it makes a wonderful community tank. They're really easy to spawn, and it's fun to do it that way. Found a manufacturer makes this size tank. Oh, man, I'd love to get some. Uh, if it's U.S.-based, let me know where, Drifter. The plants like water surface movement. Somebody asked this earlier. I don't think it bothers them. Why does my rainbow shark chase other fish? It's in their nature. They just do it. There are fish that chase other fish. That's what they do. It's in their nature to do it. Sheep's head minnow chase everything. They're like darting around all the time. That's what they do. Little tiny baby sheep's head minnow are chasing each other all the time. Amazing little fish. I've never seen one nip, though. Never seen them nip. Spot on what happens when I'm bloated with bug bites. That's spine. Puke them up first day. I move to your belly and swim finish. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. And can auto cichlids reproduce on a dirty tank? Autos. I've never done it, but I don't know why not. Um, probably the best way to do it, 
you need a really good live food web. And then probably um, if you have a thick, a thick live food web, that'll probably work. I don't think they're brackish. Now, I could be wrong about that. They might have a brackish face. I'm not sure. That would be the only thing that would prevent their, their eggs from hatching. They may need salt water, but I don't believe that's true. I, I've, I've never tried to breed them, so I really don't know. My girl asked, do the fish in my tank stack up all facing the same direction, Eric said. <clears throat> That's an interesting question. It would be odd if they have something to look at. Um, or if it's a, a shoal fish. A fish that swims in a shoal. But that they stack up looking in the same direction. That that would be odd uh, to me. I don't know. Zen Injitron Gamer. Save one and they'll replace it with more over and over. You got to break the cycle. That's it. Exactly. Chew them out. Get angry with them. Why you got this sick fish here? Why you doing that? Why do you do that? Don't do that. That's wrong. Get on their butt about it. Don't try to save the sick fish. Get mad at them for having sick fish. That's the solution to this. Get real, folks. Uh, would I be able to get Corey's? Rainbow with a rainbow chunk, yeah, absolutely. That'll be fine. Not a problem. Harlequins. Love Harlequin. Estuaries are silty, muddy areas. Low to Silver Creek. Yeah, is that right? Reproducing the da 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 da. Low to estuaries. So they're a brackish. They are brackish. Manu, it's a true plant throat growth. How come I answered that half an hour ago? Erie is having some lovely cider. Is this hard cider or not hard cider? I love cider. I don't like hard cider. But it's not good for me because it's got so much sugar in it. It gives me uh, instant diarrhea. Just goes, flushes me up. Oh, what, what, my baby, my daughter when she was an infant. I was eat, I was drinking cider and she wanted some. I gave her a little bit, and she got cramps from it. And I held her and comforted her and patted her and felt so bad about it. And then eventually it went. <laughs> And it all came out, and she was fine. That was one of the fond memories of my... Somebody asked me earlier about fond memories. That certainly is one. A fond memory. My little baby daughter pooping to relieve her apple cider distress. After I felt so guilty giving it to her. Oh dear, what are you putting your substrate mix? Well, there it is, John Tim. Um, you need to get over to the shoal. Somebody post the link to the shoal. I don't know if I got it. I don't think I do. I do not. Post the link to the show because that's where you're going to get all the information you need about how to do a dirty tank, what to put in it, what the formula is, and so forth. Preston asked me about memories. 
I was thinking of another one. Um, when I was ordained a deacon by the bishop at the cathedral, the National Cathedral in D.C., my father stood with me and shared in the ordination. That was a high mark in my life. He was gone by the time I received my elder's order, so did not have the chance to share that with him, but would have loved to. Leo Vaccaro put Venix Rasboris in my Blue Dream breeder tank. They leave the shrimp alone. They absolutely wiped out a hydrant. Yes, indeed. They love hydrant. Oh, yeah, Corey's are definitely a cleanup crew. Absolutely. What else we got? Don't rely on them to be tank cleaners, Silver Creek says. Peter just bought another substrate package. Eerie first, grumpy lumpy, thinking so real. Oh, well. Straight out of Cornwall. Huh. Eerie first. Taxi. Straight out of Cornwall. Thumbs up, people. Don't make me get the whipping stick. Drifters Workshop. Father Fish has a Discord. Special supplements recipe available for free. Easier to buy it pre-made. Because you don't need to buy the materials in bulk. And it is available... In, in the UK, in the EU, in Canada, in Brazil, and soon in Australia. I have suppliers now in four countries working on Australia and trying to get somebody to set up in, uh, in the Golden Triangle. That'll hit a neck, I hope. 100 green neon. Green neon. 110 green now. Yeah. Here, you're crazy. You need to really get that that um, food web going about two inches deep and you'll start seeing babies in there. That would be very, very exciting, Erie, to get these guys spawning. Uh, Ralph, should I wait for female fiddler to release eggs in new larvae growing tech or should she release them? And the current tank move the baby crabs. You'll never see them. They'll be too tiny. You need to do. You need to move her now. So when she lets them go, they'll immediately be able to get into that uh, that food web uh, and be going grown right away. Move her now. Otherwise, you'll miss them. Brazil. Uh, if you go to fatherfish.fish. We have the link posted on fatherfish.fish for Brazil. It's there now. They were a Pleco fan. Fancy Pleco videos. Oh, bravo. Bravo. I need to get some fancy, fancy Pleco, fancy Pecos, right? Director's Workshop. Yeah, the recipe is there. You can do it. I spend, I spend uh, about five hundred dollars a month buying the ingredients for the substrate, and I sell about two hundred a month. So it ain't cheap, folks. Adele, best place to find some dirt. You need to get over to check out what the dirt is. It is a formula. It's not just dirt. It's four different things. Do it right. Do it right. Don't just throw dirt in there. That's only one part of it, Adele. Get over to the Discord. Check out the formula so you know exactly how to do it. 
not expensive and not hard to do. <laughs> Caleb is saying my 150 looking so much better since I added an inch of sand. I dare say. You know what? I've lost my cloth. What did I do with my cloth? Where is it? Well, that's funny. It's gone. What happened to the gone? Weird. There it is. It got shunted. All right, we got an hour. We're in good shape. Is that right? Do we do? Yes, we do. Quote of the day. Uh, dirty is not dirted. Dirted is not dirty. Dirted is not dirty. Quote of the day. I'll do wafer. What is a food web? W bass. I. Uh, w bass. You need uh, that's a. Uh, it's a resurrection jar. Uh, we need that link, guys. We need to. Need to get that link. Let me get it here. Uh. And I can't get on. That's peculiar. There we go. All right, I'm going to give you the link. This is a lifetime link. Never expires link. Yep. There. Talk about breathing for money out of small tanks like a trunk. The trick is not breathing. The trick is raising. And the best way to raise fish is in tubs, outdoors, in warm weather. They will grow faster that way than anything else you can do. And you can get more of them that way. If you can do tubs indoors in cold weather, so much the better. You might move them in and out. Uh, outdoors, they get a whole lot more nutrients from all of the, the influence of, of, of nature uh, in uh, getting into the... Uh, Getting into the, what size tubes? I don't know what that is. End time is coming. Near freezing or below here in Minnesota. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely end times. You definitely will get, um, you'll get life. Bring it in. Warm it up. You'll be amazed what comes out of it. Absolutely. What size tubs? Um, 30 gallon. Lowe's sells at, at Best Buy. They sell these 30 inch tubs for 10 bucks. And they're rigid. They're wonder. Storage tub. They're about that tall, that wide, and that deep. About 18 inches deep. 30 inches long. About 14, 16 inches high. Absolutely perfect. I've got a couple of dozen of them spread all over my property. 
I'm going to be moving them indoors. I just got a warehouse, so I'm moving a lot of them indoors for the winter. Um, I'll probably put them out for the summer. We'll see how that goes. My landlord might get upset about it. Uh, you can collect that. You can collect all year round. Abadu made two better bowls. Bravo. What's this? Victor Costco. I think I did Victor Costco. I did that, didn't I? Let's see who else is here. I'm trying to do this all by myself. It's getting to the point where it's out of hand. I haven't had a helper up here for a while. Tommy is here. How do I want to attempt to keep my tank? New to fish keeping. That was 75. Had fish in for about 24 hours. 82 degrees. 82 degrees. That'll prevent ick. It'll keep them healthy. And it'll give you a chance to take a breath and learn how to do it. All the people have told me I'm crazy. Fish need all kind of different temperatures. Not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is this brand new person who's got a couple of fish and needs to keep them alive. 82 degrees. Do it now. And then keep learning. And you'll figure things out as you get along. But that'll keep them alive and healthy. Do I hear crickets? Ryan says. Ah. You know what? I need to get. The timestamp here. Don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Okay, 7 Eleven. Atelio has asked this question three times. I think I've answered it twice. Tara Watara. Okay. 7 11, 7 12. I'm good. We're there. I'm down to the bottom. Here he's saying I'm shutting up. Good move, Erie. Good move. Is it my birds? Geotech makes. All right, we're running out of juice here. And it's only 10 minutes after 7. Elio. Donna Arnold. Ryan Oaks, hey Ryan, six feet. How many we got here? 150. Staying about the same. That bear won Aloha, very new to fish keeping. That's one of my female mollies. There's a chunk of her tail missing. Isolated her already. Any advice, please? 
add a little bit of salt to the water. They are a brackish water fish. It will prevent bacteria and promote healing. As soon as you see it healing up, you can move or do try to figure out why it happened. Apart the apathetic squid. What's your opinion on predator prey ecosystem tank? Thinking about introducing a pistogram into my guppy community to help control population. It, it usually doesn't work uh, because the prey uh, gets totally wiped out. A big tank with a lot of a lot of uh, space to hide is kind of key to making it work. Oh, I deleted your message. Didn't want to do that. Unhide user. I clicked the wrong thing. Apathetic squid. Let's try this one more time. Give you a wrench. There. What are your thoughts on heating the room? Over here. Absolutely perfect. If you can tolerate 80 degrees, um, generally the summer works out pretty well, unless your uh, AC is down in the 60s or something. Delio Arrecadura. Adahora. Is sorry about something. Don't be. Ooh. Let's see. Krypton, cryptic Viper is going to make a resurrection jar. Construction channel. You asked the question about heating the room. I already gave you a wrench that hadn't shown up yet. Have you thought about selling native fish? I haven't thought about selling fish yet. But I'm moving into a warehouse. I'm going to be setting up tubs. So it's a good chance. I'll be getting a fairly decent breeding operation. If that happens, then I'll be in a position to do it. There are certainly some fish I want to be able to sell. And I, I have access to most of them. So we'll see how all that works out. It's going to take a while, though, to, to really get it together. Why would go shrimp get white? On their exoskeleton. Sounds like bacteria, volcanics, or fungus. Or getting ready to shed. Could be getting ready to shed. Dirt Aquarium says the ultimate tank hack, says Leo. You get you you get put almost any plant you want in the tank. Without having to age the tank. Absolutely. Bonificial president. Oh, what? Shaman slept in. Glad to have you awaken with us. I got a fly. Where's the fly? Water. It is. Get that little bugger. He's landed on me twice. Uh, molting, yeah, probably. Do it again, fly. Got him. Got him. I guess who gets him? Exactly. Feeding flies to my fish. They're crazy for them. The gold, the uh, top menu's got them. The fungulus. 
crazy. A Parasimus knot. Pretty sure you've talked about this topic in the past. What are your thoughts on the U.S. government potentially banning imports ex export of tropical fish in the future? I think it is probably one of the greatest violences that could possibly be done, not just to hobbyists, but to the environment in general and to thousands of species of fish that depend on the trade for their very survival. It will spell the extinction of thousands of species of animals. Absolutely, absolutely evil. Probably one of the greatest evils that could possibly be perpetrated. It might well result in the collapse of the global environment. I think it is potentially that severe. Based on a level of ignorance that is impossible to even comprehend. And I wish the hell the people who are proposing it could hear me say that. Because it is absolutely true. Absolutely. They have not a clue what they're talking about, what they're proposing. Not even a clue. It's based on fundamental stupidity. Not just ignorance, stupidity. Mental aberration. Evil. A mentality of evil. I can't believe such a thing could even be proposed. Just too shocking for words. Bye, W. Bass. Nice to have you with us. Donna Arnold's hoping I film it. Uh, we're going to do the uh, next. Sunday, I I will be at a club meeting. I'm going to give you the name of the club here because I keep forgetting it. Uh, I'm in the row. Wait a minute. Let me. Oh, uh, let me get it. It is the ACM club. Which is Aquarium Club of Maryland. It'll be in Bel Air, Maryland, next Sunday. Uh, the meeting begins at one o'clock. Uh, I'll be there. It'll be the very first meeting of the club. Uh, I'll be doing the uh, uh, the program. It will be live stream. We're going to live stream it. Right here on this channel. Uh, but that means I may not be back in time to be able to do the regular Sunday stream. I may be on the road. Uh, it's a good chance that'll be the case because I probably won't leave there until six, and it, it's at least a three-hour drive, and I have one stop along the way, on the way back plus dinner, so I probably won't be getting back until eight o'clock at night or so. We will do live stream the following Sunday. That'll be the nineteenth. And we will be celebrating a thousand subscribers. So at that point, we're going to do a whole bunch of giveaways. It'll, we're going to bring people up. We're going to have a party. It'll be a gay old time. So please join us for that. But also join us the, this coming Sunday at noon or one o'clock. 
for the uh, the ACA live stream. I may rebroad. Well, that'll be available. Um, it'll be available as a video uh, by three or four o'clock. Francisco Ferreira, live near the equator line. Lots of people have 500 liter water reservoirs used as fish tank to breed or grow exposed every day direct sunlight. Even so many fish are good in this setup. Absolutely. Absolutely. If it's in the ground, the bottom of it is going to stay cool. It'll be a thermocline. If, if, it's, if it's two feet deep even, you'll be able to feel the difference between the temperature of the bottom and the temperature of the top. Len Smith, have a tank set up for three weeks. Bubbles coming up out of the substrate. Is that from decomposition of the compost and the dirt? Yes. And it's healthy. It's not a problem at all. It is nitrogen and CO2. Not a problem at all. Don't worry about it for a second. Porosimus. Do you change water prior to the behavior happening? Or did the weather swing? Cores all times react to change. That's true. That's true. That's true. And then they release hormones, which causes other fish to spawn. So you can get various species spawning simultaneously. Another fly here. Ooh. He got away from me. Almost at him. Good night, Cal, Chow, Kyle, Cal, Barancas, Chow. Radium C of Captain Newton Sam Soil Aquarium. Uh, I have kept, you know, I've not kept newts in aquariums. I've kept newts in terrariums. A newts prefer to come out of the water. They, they have to stay moist, uh, but they don't like to be in water uh, solely. They, they like to be able to come out. If you have moss, in a terrarium with the water environment that they can come out to and get under that moss, that's ideal for them. They much prefer that kind of environment. Uh, the water will only stay hot in the top few inches. It will not be hot in the bottom. It doesn't heat all the way down. I missed that guy. I don't see any dead ones here. Need to kill the other one to feed the fish. They love flies. Fish Fam Link. Hello, Fish Fam Link. Delighted to have you here. Very first when gay makes sense. Amen to that. Let's see. I'm all the way down. Look at that. Cam's Aquatics. Hello, hello. Progress on the discus spawning. Nothing happening. I did. I haven't really announced this. I did once. A couple of weeks ago. I think on Discord. But I haven't said anything about it here, and I need to. I lost the discus. Uh, and it was my fault. I got cocky and allowed the tank to, uh, the, the, the air stone quit working. And I had 
added something to the tank and it caused it caused the O2 level to drop. And I noticed them in the evening hovering. I put a little food in. They didn't respond to it. I did not deal with it right then when he needed to deal with it. By the next morning, they were gone. So it was sheer laziness on my part. I, I just, I got cocky. I thought they were fine. I, I, I was not paying adequate attention and did not take care of them adequately. So I screwed up and lost the discus. So I'm waiting. I'm going to be setting up uh, another tank. I have a, a, a 40 gallon cube that I've had discus in before. I'm going to be setting that up in the warehouse and that will have discus in it. But I'm going to buy a pair uh, from Super Cichlids, a good quality pair, and see if I can't really get them spawning. And I promise I will be diligent. And I won't let that happen again. That should never have happened. It was totally my fault. It was not paying attention to what was going on. I just, I just, I got cocky. I really did. Stupid. Stupid. All right. Oh, I would put a sponge filter in G flat. Uh, having a little water movement, I think, is helpful. It's uh, you could even do it with with an air stone. I think that little bit of water movement keeps dead zones from being created, and that's the real danger in a not in a a tank that has no flow. Is dead zones get created, and that can create serious problems. That's essentially what happened in my discus tank. The the air the uh, the filter quit. There was no air. It created a dead zone right around the heater with that higher temperature of 85. It was just enough to drop the O2 level to the point where they couldn't survive it. Um, so yeah, and then have two sources. Of moving water. That's the other critical principle. We learn by screwing up. We do learn by screwing up, no question about it. Henry Thomas, nice to have you with us, Henry. Let me make sure you got a wrench. Delighted to have you with us. R.D. Red, got here late. Nice to have you, R.D. Going to get you a wrench. And who is this? D.C. Rogers. What is your website? Fatherfish.fish. Fatherfish.fish. There are some false websites. Fatherfish.fish, and it's really going to be nice. I'm really excited about it. I have a friend of mine, J Dog, who's Jeremy, is putting it together, and he's a master, just an absolute master, doing a beautiful job with it. Fatherfish.fish. 
Yeah, until we learn and improve. It really is, friend. Doesn't do any good to be successful unless unless it's successful born of learning through failure. If you try something the first time and succeed, you probably won't be able to duplicate it because you won't know how you got there. Alex had not dropped all in a while. I talked to Alex a week or two ago. Uh, we agreed to do um, a joint video, and we haven't gotten around to it. And I really need to follow up. It's my fault. I haven't followed up on it yet. Shaman's mother is calling him autistic. It ain't a bad thing. It makes you a genius. Green hen loves fish and is now a mom. Victor Coco, Coco wants to know, Donna Arnold, what kind of fish do you have? We're going to turn Victor blue. Leo Vicara, hello, hello. Phoenix are tiny. Yes, they are. Yeah, yeah. Lucas got upset with me the other day. So many people misunderstood that that um, video I did about about three problems. It was amazing how many people misunderstood it. It was directed a brand new fish keeper and provided three things they could do to not run into problems in their very first tank. But boy, I caught a lot of flack for it. In including from Lucas. Lucas said it was full of misinformation. Alrighty. And I just tried to hold my ground because the problem is trying to over teach a brand new person creates confusion because they don't remember what to remember. It needs to be very simple, very basic, do this and this and this and don't do anything else. And that's all that was. One, two, three. Stable temperature. Stable food. Deep substrate. Do those three things and you won't mess up. And it'll give you time to learn and to figure things out. Greg, talking about plants melting. Generally, the roots don't melt. So if you got melting plants, don't take them out, leave them in there. Because there's a better and even chance they'll come back from it. They have to grow roots. And very often, a plant will melt because it has been grown in the air, outside of the water, emergent. You put it in water, that leaf dies, but new leaves grow up. So don't panic when it happens. Tommy A. Good move, Tommy. Keep it simple. One, two, three. And then keep learning. Tannins are a major part of permanent every aquatic. Because that's absolutely right, Pokemons. Or por Porcimus. Porcimus? Porcimus not. Porcima. Ren LaRue. Acclimating too. 
Don't think people realize how much melting can be common when putting in plants. Yeah, that's right. It's not an abnormal thing. Mine don't typically because they're not grown emergent. They're grown in water. So they're already used to being in water. Uh, Francisco is saying, I know you tell the beginner to keep the test kit locked up. When it's useful to test the water parameters, or is it not? Well, I tell you, I always test pH. I always like to know what the pH is, because you never know. You could be in a situation where it's low, where it's like 6.0, 6.5, something like that. So it's good to know what the pH is. Beyond that, I don't think it's helpful. You get screwed up on nitrates. Ammonia is another one. Ammonia is rarely a problem if you have a tank full of plants because they eat ammonia. It's the first thing they go after. So it really is not a problem. If you're set up with a deep substrate and a lot of plants, you're just not going to have the kind of problems that require water testing. Sponge filter great for biological media. Absolutely. Uh, Ren saying the stem plant we got haven't had any melting, doing really well, love all the different kinds and need to figure out the species. The list is available uh, in, in, the, uh, in, in the Father Fish Store channel in the show. You just kind of have to match them up. And I've not set up the um, store yet to distinguish each one of them. Eventually, I guess I will. Right now, I don't want to have to carry another 16 species of, of plants apart from the packages. When, when I get these in, I get 20 species, 50 count bunches each. That's 20 times 15. That's 1,000 bunches. And my partner and I go through we each we, we lay them out in rows of 10. We go down the row, pick up eight, put them together to 16. They go in a bag. We do that until they're gone. And it usually works out pretty close. We wind up with 60 to 62 bags of bunches. And we sell out in a week. They're gone in a week. So until that changes... I'm just going to keep doing it that way. I have started selecting a few highly colorful smaller plants like the golden Nicaea and the, the uh, baby tears and the red, the red crypt, I think, the red lug. I'm doing those separately because they're unique. And I probably will do will continue to do that. Once I get moved, I'll have a bigger operation, be able to do more. I also am going to need more staff. Uh, I currently have two people working for me, and it's, it's straight out nonstop four days a week. So I'm probably going to need, and that's doing about 120 orders a week. Part of that's because we, we need to be better organized. That's the reason for the warehouse, to get it better, better organized. So we'll see as we get along. We're going to be able to do more. Yeah, Red LaRue, a lot of specific instructions with the dirt. You really need to follow the formula if you want to do it right. It's not complicated. But it's not just a matter of throwing some dirt in a tank and capping it with sand. There's more to it than that. If you want to do it right, I mean, you can you can do that. That's Wallstead. But we've got a better formula that allows it to last longer 
and get in trouble a lot less. How do you recommend setting up a dirted father fit for my 55? Duck set. And again, the instructions for that are in the show. Get over there and check it out. There's a certain amount of detail to it. It's about 10 steps. And we've got them all listed out very carefully. You just go through one step at a time and you'll get there. Oh, can we have floaters in a pack? That's a good idea. I'm doing a little of that. I'm doing Salvinia. Uh, Red Root has been unavailable. As soon as it's available, I'll have that again. Duckweed, Salvinia, Red Root. I'm trying to get um, one or two others going. So far, I haven't been able to get them going yet. Norman's Lamp Eyes with Tanganyikas. That's a good mix. That's a good mix, uh, Zenon. Works perfect. Frog bit. I can do frog bit. I can do that. Yeah, always a good idea to soak the wood beforehand, particularly if it's come if it's getting come to you dry. Soak it beforehand. The Pacific wood we're sending out, I would even do it with that. If only to get it sunk. Three savage. We got about fifteen more minutes. Father says duck bait is taken off. Gold. Well, you call it gold. You may call it something else after uh, you've been fighting it for six months. Snurt Gonzo. Can't get rid of it, I know. My problem, too. Precisely. Frog spit. That's a good one. We can do frog spit. I don't think I have any right now. Mr. Amelie, nice to see you. John Haley, hello, John. Psycho Plant Lady. Guppies love the duckweed. There are a lot of fish that eat it. Goldfish will eat it. They'll chew it right up. Leo Vaccaro. Planted pogo. You know, that's interesting. Pogo, uh, a pot of jeton is another one that plant eaters will not eat. There are a number of things you can do that, that don't get chewed up. Large pre-filter spuds. The bio rings correspond with small pothos. Uh, I use fine mesh sponge. Scott says some love frog bits, some don't. Chickens love dried duckweed. They'll like it wet too. Organic matter, I can think bristle nose, baby. Oh. Huh. Bristle nose baby. I would make an emulsion of uh, cucumber or squash, zucchini. Put it in a blender and feed it sparingly. Scott says frog bit works and 
it's lower water circulation and cooler water. Don't we use the glitter in the fish oil? I don't know about that. Glitter. Can keep frog it alive more than a couple months. Yeah, Ranchu loves it. Uh, Cisco, join us on the Discord on the. Uh, or in the show. I'm going to post the link, I think. You know what? I can do it here. Let's see what I need to do. There, now I can post it on both channels. Flamingo, happy to see you. Glad you made it. Tim Parrish. Want to put cherry shrimp. Now you can put them in right away. It'll be, oh darn, messed up again. What did I do here? Oh, come on. Tim Parrish. Oh, Tim, I messed up. I deleted your message, but also made you, gave you a wrench. If you want to repost, that was an error, and I can't fix it. It's not letting me fix it. Don't know why. All Z, C, Z. Oh, poor Tim, I know. Isn't that sad? It'll be all right, Tim. You're going to turn blue pretty quick here. I deleted you. That was, I, I'm sorry. All right, here we go. I'm going to repost it. This is Tim. Tim says, there. Oh, it's too long. Uh, funny. I don't know how you did it. I can't do it there. That's Tim. That ain't Father Fish.
Oh, that's interesting. You know, I'll tell you what. Fish will eat what they're used to. Don't believe the notion that fish like variety. They, they hate variety. Fish like eating the same thing over and over and over again, so long as it's available over and over and over again. They will always eat the same thing and again and again and again and again. If you want to change them from that, you have to stop feeding that and start feeding something new. And it'll take them a while to get used to it. But um, fish don't like variety. You can get some fish that are just so food intensive that they'll eat whatever falls in the tank. Particularly larger fish will do that. But little fish are very, very careful about what they eat. I don't know what causes that sound. Something. I don't know. Cisco tried to join Discord. Well, keep trying. It'll work. Guaranteed. It's, it's not brain surgery. Get down to the bottom here. Lower down. Doom pie. Sweet chestnut leaves. Perfect, perfect. Fall in all the dead leaves. What would Jerry recommend? Uh, a mix of leaves. Abadu is here. Hello, Abadu. Uh, Francisco, interesting. How smart do you think a fish is? Uh, I don't think they have intelligence at all. Uh, I think they have short-term memory uh, and are able, to, uh, plus they, they develop habits, patterns. They have patterns of behavior and short-term memory. Uh, beyond that, I don't think they have any any intelligence at all. Bigger, bigger fish with more developed brains probably are better. They they probably are borderline intelligence, but little tiny fish. They're not much more than amoebas. I mean, they're a step above, certainly, but, you know, they're not like a dog, a dog or a cat. Even bettas. Um, Short-term memory and, and uh, patterns of behavior. That's what you have to look for. If you cannot interpret something, it's either short-term memory by short-term... I mean, an hour tops, 15 minutes probably. And then short term memory, which would come from repetition, doing the same thing over a period of time. How many times? I don't know. Probably a dozen or more. Do things a number of times and they'll get into a pattern. If you cannot explain it by those two behaviors, then you may be looking at something that approximates intelligence. But they don't have the brain for it. 
they don't have a prefrontal lobe. So they have no ability to be able to think in any way at all. There's no rational potential in a fish, which would be the, the fundamentals of intelligence. Elephant knows they're supposed to be fine. Yeah, I think that's an animal that probably... Uh, Abba Abba is another one. These are animals that have a much more complex evolution, a much more complex biology, um, and obviously have been through a whole lot more development than scaled fish have. So, yeah, I would agree. I, I think eels are another one. Eels probably have a level of intelligence. Ab Abadu, uh, elephant nose too. There's some other fish that I, I expect have a level of some kind of intelligence. So they're able to, if not think through things, then react in a creative way somehow. Uh, I, I was part of a research at Yale some years ago where we were studying the memory of elephant nose. That research went on for several years. I was providing the fish for that study. Uh, they, uh, they never sent me the, the results of it. I think it may have wound up being... Uh, abandoned because I think ultimately they could not they could not develop any pattern in in the research so I say these things based on some experience not simply uh, shooting off shooting from the hip Never ever pour tap water in the shrimp tank. Excellent suggestion. Neocarinina are highly sensitive to chlorine and chloramide. Yeah, I think the I think they dropped it. I think the study petered out because they couldn't get any variables. It takes a little figuring out, but stick with it, Cisco. It's not really complicated. It's just unique. Once you get it figured out, then it'll become easy. It, it's it's it. You have to think it through, and you have to try just do one or two things, and just keep doing those one or two things. That'll open the door for you to be able to do more. Don't try to get it all at once. Uh, good question, Glenn. That's really excellent. How do fish know what species they are as far as hanging out with their own kind? That really interesting question. I, I think fish tend to... I don't know whether they have a reflection Collective. I think they tend to know themselves somehow. Um, I've had the theory for some time that fish like birds and butterflies and fish select their colors out of out of the um, uh, out of out of the rainbow out of the spectrum and. In so doing, have have a, a way of knowing what their color is, and so they 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 identify with that color in in others. So the color has a lot to do with it. Uh, shape, behavior, other other factors do too. It's like knowing. How do you know? You know by what you see replicated of what you experience. So when you see your experience replicated, you identify with that 
And I think that happens on a very primitive level with anything that's living. It, it has a self-awareness of some sort that allows it to identify itself in others. And so in so doing, um, mate, find, find like, like like creatures i'm not so sure that's true with microfauna it's certainly true with macrofauna and it's certainly true with higher order animals like fish and insects Been in the hobby in and out for a decade. Found your channel in the summer. Fall back in love with my tanks. Upgraded everything to dirt and no grimy. Thank you, Sarah. Delighted. Delighted to have you. Gonna get you a wrench here, my dear. And delighted to have your response. And we are at the witching hour we have hit 801 interesting albino variation is recognized but totally different colors yeah it goes to more than color because male female are different color typically in in many in many species so it's more it's more self-identification I think the notion that a living entity has self-awareness is really the key. Amoeba have self-awareness. Any living entity is aware of itself. It's the God factor. It is the universal knowing. And and being able to identify that, that self in others is the means by which shoaling occurs. It's the mean by, means by which people fall in love with each other by identifying in another something of oneself. Yeah, Canyon, good point. Uh, I think you really need to get those kind of macrofauna going in their own environment and then introduce them as food. Set up some shoeboxes. It's the best way to do it. It is interesting, isn't it, Duke? Fun. Yeah. All right, Pixie. Get you a wrench. We need to get out of here, guys. We've been here two hours or two and a half hours. Uh, I'm running out of juice. I got to deal with something here. Get something to eat or something. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a day tomorrow that won't quit. Um, any kind of uh, live bearer, tetra, anything like that. A lot of small fish do fine with bettas. Very few are problematic. Yeah, anything that doesn't threaten them. That's right, John. Absolutely. Ah. Blessed Sunday to you, Alaska. Homegrown root. Diamond blasting zone. I love it. I love it. Absolutely, Shifty Mac. It's perfect. Blasting sand is totally inert. It's clean, it's pure, it's totally inert. Perfect, perfect stuff. All right, we're going to go. Love you all. Uh, next Sunday, next Sunday at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, we're going to be live from Bel Air, Maryland. The Aquarium Club of Maryland will have its first meeting. I'm going to be the keynote speaker for it. 
Uh, that's going to be live. I will not have live next Sunday because I'm going to be traveling. But the following Sunday, we're going to do a big celebration, a big party, celebrating 100,000 subscribers. That'll be on the 19th. So see you all next Sunday, and then again the 19th. Love you all.